morning, ladies and gents. It's, uh, it's really a privilege to, uh, to share your company today. Uh, next Monday is the centenary of the tragic death of the subject of my short presentation. Lieutenant Colonel Terence Patrick McSharry was the venerated CR of the 15th Battalion, AIF. Uh, his war service is important to Australia. Uh, it should be commemorated. I think that he represented a microcosm of the British world in which he lived and grew. In fact, uh, uh, his story is representative of so many other stories of post-colonial Queensland and, uh, and Australia as well. Uh, with that in mind, Terry McSharry uh, was born in a colony of Queensland in Townsville on the 9th of August 1880. Uh, his birth record indicates that he was a son of Matthew and Margaret McSherry, who else could they be, of County Leitrim in Ireland, and uh, 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 he was uh, the oldest of six children. It's quite an Irish heritage, but uh, Terry McSherry was profoundly influenced by the British world in which he lived and grew up. In fact, uh, <coughs> Queensland in his youth was on the frontier of British society. And that's, uh, that's quite significant as well. A quick sidebar here. Uh, being Irish in Australia was not popular at this time. Uh, Matthew McSharry emigrated to Australia in the same year that the Fenians broke into Fremantle Prison and took the, uh, the Irish uh, prisoners away from Western Australia back to the United States. He was 23 years old. And uh, in fact, he was born uh, uh, in the same year as another Irish Australian, Ned Kelly. Uh, so that is his, uh, his heritage for us. Um, there were six kids born up and down the Queensland coast. Uh, uh, by 1890, they'd settled in Brisbane in an Irish enclave, uh, Fortitude Valley, as it's known today, the Valley in Brisbane. And Terry was enrolled at uh, the Christian Brothers College, the Terrace College. Uh, in Brisbane, which is quite famous and still there today. Uh, he finished school in 1896 and he went into the, uh, the Queensland Public Service as a junior bookkeeper. Uh, uh, by all accounts, Terry was quite a bright lad. He was also a, uh, a very keen sportsman. He, uh, he boxed, he played rugby, he was a swimmer, but most of all, he was a, uh, a passionate horseman and hence his nickname, Jockey Jim. Uh, he was only a small chap. In 1908, Terry qualified as a surveyor in Queensland and he, uh, he got a job with the Metropolitan Water Board in Queensland. He commissioned into the militia in 1912 and in fact he enjoyed that service so much that by the end of the following year he was virtually serving full time with the militia. Uh, when the Great War broke out, uh, he enlisted within a week of, uh, of Australia's declaration into the 2nd Light Horse Regiment. He also uh, joined the United Services Institute in Brisbane, which is still quite well established. And it was there that he rubbed shoulders with fellows like uh, Chevelle, William Glasgow and James Cannon. And all of these, uh, these senior officers who were a similar age to Terry had a, uh, a profound influence on his, uh, his wartime service. I, I really, I don't have time to chat too much about what Terry did during the war, although it was, a, it, it was quite a, a, a distinguished uh, um, three years for him. He went to Gallipoli. Uh, he was awarded the first military cross to Australia for his service as the adjutant at Queen's Post with the Light Horse. He transferred to the 15th Battalion under the command of Jim Cannon uh, and uh, he stayed on Gallipoli with the 15th Battalion. He deployed to France with them uh, the following year and uh, uh, he was soon promoted to Major and made uh, XO of the 15th Battalion. By the end of the year, James had moved on and uh, uh, Terry McSharry was a CI of the 15th. During 1917, he commanded the 15th Battalion at uh, Bullycourt, Mazine and Passchendaele. Terry McSherry's diary privately record, uh, records that he was quite distressed by the, uh, the needless slaughter of his troops, particularly at Bully Corps, and he, uh, he broke into tears uh, 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 as he was writing, and he records that in his diary. 
over the loss of his, uh, his fine body of troops. I suppose his, uh, his path out of that was one of redundancy and hard training. Uh, in, in a superb British pattern too, by the way, uh, the Australians were an element of the, uh, of the British Army. He, uh, he thought hard training, prescribed training, uh, prescriptive training, and Australians fitting in to the pattern of a greater whole uh, was very important. And in fact, I would contend that that is the, uh, the pattern that Australians have served in war ever since. And uh, <coughs> men like McSharry actually set that up. Uh, his last operation uh, <coughs> was at Hamel in 1918, and uh, his leadership was so sublime that he was awarded a bar to his uh, already awarded DSO for his efforts at, uh, at Hamel. In fact, that operation is quite significant for Australia as well. Uh, the Australian Corps Memorial is at Hamel. Uh, these flags, I think, are significant as well. It was a, uh, a show of things as they were. 1918, but also importantly on the left, uh, uh, the US and British flags were a show of things to come for Australia as well. So uh, that brings me to a, a, a quick sidebar. McSharry, if we look to the northwest of Australia in McSharry's um, uh, day, we would see an extension of colonial Europe uh, in all of those, uh, those colonies there. Uh, when you think about it, that map actually <coughs> changed every 25 years for the subsequent century to, uh, to the 1918 of today. Uh, my, my contention is that the one constant for Australia in that, uh, that changing map is that uh, men and women like Terry McSharry have continued to serve and that their story uh, resonates still and it, it should be told. Uh, tragically, Terry McSherry's war uh, uh, came to a close when he was killed uh, on the Somme. Uh, his unit was, uh, was preparing for the 100 Days Offensive when it came under heavy German uh, artillery fire on the 6th of August 1918. Um, Terry uh, uh, saw one of his soldiers wounded in the bombardment and uh, observers said that he went out to assist this man when another shell landed nearby. He was mortally wounded and, uh, and passed away later on during the day. Uh, McSharry is uh, interred at the Corby Commonwealth uh, War Graves Cemetery there. I need to show you this image as well. Um, it, it really resonates with me. Um, Captain Terence McSharry, MC, on uh, his departure from Gallipoli and deployment to the Western Front, that was taken in March 1916 on the left. Uh, the burden of command two years later, um, when he was just 37 years of age, uh, is, is quite evident <coughs> in that image. Um, my great-grandfather served with the 15th Battalion and uh, uh, his war service as well was quite traumatic within that, uh, that unit. Um, uh, it's for that reason that I believe that um, uh, we should be still telling these sorts of stories because they resonate even 100 years later. Where to? My two propositions. All right, I've, I've already covered the first one. Record the stories. They still resonate. They inform us. They influence us. They're part of the Australian consciousness, I suppose. Uh, it's part of a nation's heritage. Um, in 1914, we looked to the British world. In 1945, we looked to, uh, to the US. That took a long time to eventuate. Uh, we still look to the US today. Um, that notion of a big and powerful friend still resonates. Uh, the one constant are our sailors, soldiers and airmen who have continued to serve throughout that period. And I think that that's a, uh, um, uh, 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 there are still lessons in that as well. I can't believe it only took 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>